Hi, Nabal here with APA. Uh, we're about to show you how to install a D loop and the twister for containment rest on your bow. Okay, so this D loop, I already got the one side melted, and we're about to fray and melt the opposite side. Now, um, measurement wise, once I melted this one and I take a measurement, it's four and one eighth of an inch. That gives you kind of an average size D loop. Now, it's very important that when you go to fray these, to do it and make sure you got lots of, uh, uh, I guess, material that's frayed on the end. So when you melt it, it forms a pretty nice bead. So that way it doesn't slip through by accident, okay? So we're gonna just melt that right now. I usually touch it against something really cold, like a piece of steel. So you have a really nice mushroom. And you have to let it cool down a little bit before you actually use it, okay? So at this point, you just fold it in half like this, feed both sides through, pull one side. Now you got your first knot made. Now what's important is you see right now, the rope's coming off on this side of the string. So it has to come around to the opposite side when you do your bottom knot, okay? That balances that D loop when it's going forward. So you push that through, okay, you wrap it around and you feed it through the bottom of the knot like that, just like so. Just take a needle and fire and you can just kind of just pull it tight and do it with my left hand so you guys can see on that side how I'm doing it. There you go. So now you have your D loop installed on the string and it's balanced so you have the rope coming off on one side on your d-loop and off to the other side on this side okay now for center shot now we're doing the video from that side so you don't see 100 percent but on the opposite side of this riser we have machined lines that are going across here as well as on the carry handle and i can refer to that to get my center shot on the on the arrow okay just like you see that line right here, we have lines on the opposite side. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put an arrow in it and actually line it up right with those lines. And I can move my D-loop up and down right now just to get that so it's sitting square. Okay. All right, once I've achieved that, I got a good starting point for the rest. Okay, we're gonna unpackage this rest. This is a twister for containment. Okay. So now you have your lock screw and washer. This already comes on it. And inside the package, you also find a set screw and a spring, an extension spring that we've made for it. Okay, we'll show you how that installs in a few minutes. Okay, so you're first going to start out by installing the set screw on our bows. We have two different holes, so we like to put a second uh, screw here, a set screw, to prevent the rest from rotating up and down uh, by mistake. So, right. wrench on that. Now, Now, I usually put that in so it's about, you know, three quarters of the way in, leaving it about a quarter of an inch protruding out of the riser, okay? So this arrow rest now will also mount next, okay? So now, there we go, okay. So, as you see now, you have a little bit of adjustment in and out. And I'm gonna put now the actual screw that holds the rest or the bracket onto the bow. Now, I usually try to get it so it's flush on the front here, with the front of the riser. Now, the guy can move it forward and back as needed if you choose to. 
to make sure you have adequate clearance for the cradle to rotate up and down without contacting the side of the riser here. Okay, once it's in place, you can snug that down pretty good so it's nice and tight. And that's never gonna go anywhere. Um, we also have a machined line here, if you noticed, to make sure that this is sitting level. Now, when you're using both screws, it automatically levels it on this particular rest. On other brands of rests, you may wanna go with that line to make sure you got your bracket sitting square. Okay, so now the next step would be to install or check your center shot and your uh, elevation on the rest. Okay, so now we're going to put an arrow in the bow. Okay, now the height on these uh, on our twister bow containments new models comes preset already, so you have no height adjustment, okay? You just have your windage adjustment. So what I normally do at this point is make sure that my arrow is sitting square to the string. Um, so in this case, it's asking me to move the D-loop up just a little bit to get it perfectly square. There we go. Now I'm also watching the lines. I'm running my arrow parallel to this shaft. Now you could use other methods to square your bow to get it 100%, but we normally get extremely close by using just the lines on the bow here on the front uh, in relation to the arrow, okay? So now we got that in place. Now we gotta set our center shot. What I normally do is I take another arrow, position the arrow on, this, on the riser of the bow. Okay? And what I wanna see right now is these both, both these arrows to be parallel to each other, okay? So I'll adjust my windage on here to make sure that uh, you, the arrow in the rest is sitting square to the arrow that's laying against the riser of the bow. Now to do so, you just need your 7 32nd wrench. Loosen the main lock screw on the bracket. You'll see a red screw on the back that one you never touch. So this is your windage adjustment that's right on the main lock screw, on the main bracket, sorry. And then you have here on the side your micro drive. So you can now adjust the rest in and out as needed to get both those arrows in line with each other, making sure that they stay also parallel this way. And if you're looking from, a, from the back, from the string view, now they're straight in line with each other. I know that's what I want it. Once I got it set left and right, I simply tighten it down the main brackets. Now my wind is set, elevation is set. The last thing left to do would be to install the rope. And that is done as easy as this. So you just simply remove it. Now we've added a new feature, which includes this coil spring. This is a great deal. The reason what that does is it takes any imperfection um, and keeps everything nice and tight. I'm gonna show you how to install that. Uh, so what you do is you take and do another D-loop knot just like you would on your D-loop. So you feed both sides through. The only thing is it's only one side that's melted, right? Like that, go to your top Y cable. You pull that tight. Okay. And then leave, you know, about half an inch or three quarters of an inch of rope and then just cut that off. Now, you take your coil spring, you feed that through the rope that we just cut and I fray the ends. So we got these designed so they're just the right size to put a D-loop rope through it and so you can actually melt a bead on the end and it will actually never slip through. And then you just re add and melt the bead. Now watch you don't cut, uh, melt your string by accident, so always watch how you face your plater. And again, you stay something cold just to make sure you make a nice bead on it while it's cooling down. At this point, just let it sit and cool off. Okay, while that's cooling down, you just, the remainder of your rope, you just simply Form another bead that's going to go on the opposite side of the spring. Okay. 
There you go, just like that. We'll let that cool down. And you take it, feed it through this side. There you go. What happens now, it, it gives that, you have constant tension and on your rope, so that way as it settles in place or stretches, it'll always rotate that twister completely out of the way. So now what we gotta do is just feed it back into the twister head where it says elevation here. You pull it tight. Just to have a little extra tension on there, and you simply tighten your set screw. Now this is a cone point set screw, so you don't have to go too tight on it. And I recommend maybe putting a blue Loctite on there if you like, and just simply make a little knot here just to, for extra security. There you go. If this is a little too long, just cut it off. Just melt the end of it. And then the final step would be to take uh, the ARS will come with some fleece. What we normally do is just simply cut that lengthwise in half. And then you would stick that on right at the very front edge of your shelf of the riser, okay? So that shows, then that way when the arrow is resting against the shelf, it will not make any noise in a hunting situation. You know, we usually put two strips of that on there just to make sure we cover it properly. There we go. So now it's, it's nice and quiet, the arrow sits in here. When you draw your bow back, what happens is this Cable will come down, it will relax the rope, the arrow rest will come up into the launch position, and when you fire, it rotates and you shoot right through it. You gotta always remember to position your cock feather down when shooting any of the AP arrow rests. And um, if you guys have any, any questions on any of these videos too, you're welcome to call our office here and somebody will help you too in case we missed something while we're setting it up. But that's really the basics of it. You don't have to draw the bow back. You don't have to do anything. You just set it up right on the bow. And it usually takes about, whatever, three, four minutes so I can have it ready. So I hope that helped you this video. And uh, we'll talk to you next time.